Hello everyone, this is Main Poo. Today I'm not going to be playing a video game, but I am going to answer a question that I get asked a lot. I don't build laptops, okay, but I do build my own PCs. But the question that I get asked is, uh, what about the temperature on the machine that you're running on, specifically the Acer Nitro 5? I'm not a professional, uh, but I do have my A+. So I just decided to give tech support a call and see what they would say about it. It's around 40 minutes. There is some space in there, but I didn't want to cut anything out. Tell me what you think, and I hope that it answers some of your all's questions. I think the tech support guy really didn't know. He knew a little bit, but I believe when he had me on hold, he was searching the internet trying to find some information, but I already knew what he was going to say. I do know things are different and I was asking him things that I already knew, but I just wanted to see what he would say. From what he says, um, and, and come to your own conclusion, uh, take what he says, uh, because he is uh, the tech support person at Acer. I don't know if there's a higher person, but in all companies there is always someone higher than the one that you first connect with. So again, enjoy the video. Thank you for calling Acer's customer service. Español más que nueve. Using a short phrase, please tell us why you're calling. You can say things like, I'm having sound problems, or system recovery. Sorry, I didn't get that. Please tell me what you're calling about in a few words. For example, you could say computer repair, or my speakers on... CPU temperature. Sorry. Sorry, you can say internet connection, opera... Sorry, I still didn't get that. If you're calling about a problem with your internet connection, press 1. If you're calling about an issue with your operating system, press 2. For your monitor or screen, press 3. If you need recovery software or disks, press 4. If you have a problem with the power or battery on your product, press 5. For anything else, press 6. All right, to speak with a technical support agent, please say or enter your product 11 or 12 digit SNID, which is next to the barcodes on the bottom of your product label. You can also say, I need a minute, or... Sorry, I still didn't get that. Thanks. Let me confirm that. Did I get that right? Yes. Great. Before we transfer your call to an agent, our records show this product isn't registered yet. Registering it will help ensure the warranty records are accurate. After this call, please go to support.acer.com and select product registration. This call may be recorded for quality and training purposes. <laughs> while your call is being routed to the next available customer service representative. Your call may be monitored or recorded for quality control. Hello. Hello. Um, I have a question about my uh, CPU on my Acer Nitro 5 computer laptop. Okay, um, I run a YouTube channel, 
and I play games on it because this is a, a gaming laptop. And um, I'm wondering about the temperatures on the i5-7300 HQ uh, CPU. Uh, the temperatures, they get into the 90 uh, to 95 percent, uh, percentile. And I was wondering, is that dangerous on this laptop? Okay, so what's the, the temperature that you have on the laptop? Pardon me? What's the temperature that you have on the laptop, I'm sorry? The temperatures, uh, they range from around, when you're playing a game, between 80 and 90 degrees Celsius. And I was just wondering, I have the cool, the cool boost is on. Um, most of the time my computer is in a cool environment because I'm in the basement of my house. And uh, the temperatures still get up, you know, to a high temperature. And um, uh, 90 degrees on a CPU is uh, very intensive. And I was just curious, is there anything different about this laptop or, or the CPU that's different from other uh, computers? Yes, I see. Okay. Um, just to confirm, the model name of your computer is AN515-51. Am I right? Yes, you are correct. Okay. And when did you purchase the computer? Um, probably maybe about two to three months ago. But these okay. temperatures have always been there. It's not like it just happened. It's it's always been there. Now the temperature when idle is is not bad. I believe it's uh, around in the 60s, if I'm not mistaken. But it's just uh, when you play games. And I've gotten um, questions from my subscribers uh, asking me because I do promote the laptop to other gamers because it's a low budget laptop and it, it's a pretty good entry uh, into the gaming realm for computers. So. I would just like to kind of get it clarified because I don't want to tell recommend the computer if it's you know not really well. I've had I've had not had any problems with it, but the temperatures are concerning. Yes. Okay, and it happens every day that you play a game on the computer, right? Yes. Now, not not all games push it to the ninety degree uh, Celsius temperature but just on certain games, but the temperature, it's still over 85 for the most part when playing. Okay. Okay. Can you provide me please your phone number? My phone number? Yes. Okay, what's the name of the state or province where you live? Uh, it is in... Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Let me look for information on the system about the issue that you're having. Just allow me two minutes on hold, please, okay? Okay. Thank you. No, 
some fatalities related to its use. Yes. Okay. I continue looking for the information. Just allow me two more minutes on hold, please, okay? Okay. Thank you. Hello, sir. Yes. Thank you so much for holding. Um, I was looking for the information on the system, and I have heard that the, the degrees that the computers reach when you are playing those games is normal. So you need you don't need to worry about it. Oh, so the temperatures are normal? Yes. Okay. Yes, and. Let me save your information on the system, just in case that you have any issue on the computer in the future. Mm -hmm. So can you provide me please your first and last name? Okay. Can you spell your first name one more time, please? I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, let me save the information. Just allow me two more minutes of help, please, okay? Okay, and I got one more question for you when you come back. Okay.
Hmm, 100 C or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Whew, that's uh, up there. So I wonder what happens when it reaches it. Hello? Yes. Okay, thank you for calling. Um, you told me that you have a question, right? Yes. Um, I do know on Intel's website it, it does say the maximum temperature, the maximum junction temperature for the CPU is 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the computer does get up, like I said, up to 93 degrees C, sometimes a little higher, and you're saying it's not that dangerous? I, I shouldn't have to worry about that? Do you know what would happen if it does reach 100? Like your computer reach more than one hundred percent. The CPU more than one hundred. Yeah, almost one hundred degrees, because um, I know it can damage the component. So I'm just wondering, um, since you said it's safe, because ninety three degrees is not that far from one hundred. You know, when playing a game. Yes. Okay. But has the computer reach this this temperature? I mean, for example, one hundred um, Celsius degrees. Yes. Okay. Okay, and you told me that this is with a specific games, right? Just games in general. Yes. Now I'm not talking about like the the uh, browser type games that you can play through JavaScript. I'm talking games like uh, Quake or you know Unreal Tournament, um, games like Mad Max, things like that, or okay. like Fortnite. Okay, okay, I understand. In this case, just allow me two more minutes to hold this, okay? Okay. Thank you. Hmm. Of his methods. Why aren't you behaving like a normal human? Unless she doesn't have a plan and she's stalling. Maybe she's a double agent. Regardless, this dialogue does not flow. The reason the comment is strange outside of etiquette is that since the bombing fleet was so horribly designed, taking out the dreadnought was a miracle. On top of the fact that if they hadn't, the dreadnought would have destroyed them all by now. And then combo that with the fact that if they had all light speeded out, their entire fleet would be picked off right now because the bombers would be useless. The dreadnought, the supremacy, the star destroyers, and the fighters would have easy pickings. Finally, in hindsight, Poe made a decision that saved everyone's lives, again, as he has done several times. So stop treating 
treating him like a child. The scene is not only an example of poor dialogue, it is filmmaking 101 in terms of setting up a villain. We love Poe, or at least the film hopes we do. He is the hero from the first movie, and a POV character, so when a character so brazenly obstructs him and treats him like a child, we are left to wonder why, and we are naturally pointed in the direction of her being evil, or at the least the antagonist. But it's not over. Poe practically accepts response. <laughs> Well, the first one was kind of a train wreck, so let's see how this one goes. But Mahler, this is about dinosaurs. It doesn't need to make sense. The first damn film made sense. The rest of them forgot what sense is, and that's what bothers me. Alan! Uh, Alan! Good gods. So we open up at Ila Nublar, and a team of idiots are trying to collect a sample of the now dead Indominus Rex that was dragged into the den of the Mosasaurus. Yeah? Okay, good. They open up a door that connects the Mosasaurus den to the ocean somehow. Wasn't the whole point of that enclosure not to be connected to the ocean? Have you retconned it so that something can now escape, movie? That's a not-so-clever girl. In the little bathosphere exploring the den, we have one of the two men explicitly state that everything here is long dead. We know that these guys work for the bad guy in the film, and the plan for the bad guy is to retrieve 11 different species or something on the island, so they do indeed know that things actually live here, making the line utterly retarded. And well, the Mosasaurus is still the big man. No, I'm not kidding, it just eats them. But before that happened, they were able to quickly find the corpse of the Indominus Rex, and a bone was successfully sawn off for retrieval. Imagine, if they had taken it up with them on the pod, that bone would have been lost. Lucky. Hello? Yes. Operating the door that can okay, thank you so much for holding. Okay, so now, um, in this case, sir, I can create a, a, a case for you. If you decide to send a computer to us for this kind of situation, you can. So, I will be, the case will be open for you. I will send you the insertions by email. Oh. And just in case that you decide to send the computer to us, I will send you a shipping label as well, okay? Okay, well, let me ask you, are you saying that something is wrong with my computer? No, it is in case that the computer has reached uh, more than 100 no. degrees Celsius. No, I, it has not reached more than 100. I'm saying it's it's close to 100. I've seen it as high as 90, okay. 93, 95... See, uh, but it never reached yeah. 100. But are you saying that it is something wrong with it? No, the computer is, is normal. As I said before, this temperature is normal, especially because you have a gaming computer. Right. Okay. Yes. So. So. The so you want me? You want? Do you want me to to leave the case open for you? Or uh, it's okay. How long? Uh, if you're saying it's normal, I think I'll be okay. But if you think it's okay. not, you can leave it open. But the only thing that concerns me is that on you know Intel's website, it's just saying that you know 100 degrees Celsius is the max that this CPU can take, and it is reaching. It is getting up that high. Not all the time. It just depends on what game it is. Um, yeah. Is it is it safe and is there any type of recall on this laptop or anything like this? Is there another model that's coming out that addresses the CPU temperature of the laptop? Okay, um, well, you know that Intel is different um, is a different company. Yes. If if you go to the website of Predator, Predator for example, you right. will see the information. And there are some people that have, have asked for this question. And in the page says that this temperature is normal for the computer. Okay, so the the, the Acer Predator, because the Acer Predator is pretty much this laptop, but just a different uh, covering on top and um, uh, a faster CPU and everything, right? Uh, uh, and a 1060 yeah. or something like that? Yes. Okay, so they are pretty much the same. Do you know if the internals, like the um, the cooling, the fan, uh, the pipes and everything, is that the same as well? No, I'm sorry. 
so it's different. It has uh, the the heat pipes aren't running over the GPU uh, uh, processor. What you mean the the processor of the battery? No, I mean uh, okay. You know the the video card in here, the 1050 Ti has um, heat sinks on it, correct? And the yeah. Intel CPU has heat sinks as well. Now, when the laptop gets hot, well, the CPU gets hot of the uh, Intel processor, it exhausts the air out of the laptop. Now, does the heat pipes run over the GPU as it, as, as it is exhausting the uh, temperature from the CPU? Because that would add, or possibly, I don't know, add temperature to the GPU as it's going out externally to the uh, of the um, computer itself. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I don't have this information. I'm sorry. Okay. Is there anyone I could talk to about that? Because I'm just trying to. Be, I'm just trying to be. I'm just trying to be careful here. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to have a, a a computer laptop that you know. Some people ask me like, hey. Uh, is that laptop worth buying? And I'm, for the most part, I'm like, yeah. I mean, for the price and everything, and for the performance it puts out, it's an excellent machine. But yeah. you know, I, I can't tell people like, hey, I, I recommend it. Uh, and then they go out, and then they start having all problems too, and they're looking at me like, why, why did you, why did you recommend this to me? I just don't want to be in that boat. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I understand. Okay, so if you want, did I some questions like that, mm -hmm. and you can go to the website of, of Acer, uh -huh. there is in a specific page where you can ask for those kind of questions. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, so is there like a, um, I know you said you was going to leave that open for me, just in case, but you said it is normal, uh, and they are answering those questions on the Acer uh, website that has the uh, Predator line of laptops and this line of laptops yeah. as well. Um, but uh, you said you're just going to send it to me in an email if I decide to send it in, which I probably not since it is normal, uh, but you are going to send it to me in an email form just in case? Yeah. Okay. Yes, exactly. All right. So can you give me please your email address? Sure. It's... Okay, so now, um, can you tell me please the name of the city where you live? Okay. And can you give me please your zip code? Can you repeat the word, please, one more time? Yes. save the information and after that I will send you the instructions by email, okay? Okay. Just allow me to more means of hope, please. All right. Thank you.
connects the den to the ocean gets attacked by a T-Rex that popped up just in time. And as a result, his iPad was only half loading, the door closing, and being crushed prevents it from closing the door now? Why wouldn't it be binary? You hit close and the door closes. Why do you need a constant connection to the iPad? A system like that sounds incredibly unsafe and downright ineffective, proven by the fact that the Mosasaurus actually escapes. So, um, yeah. Oh, and the guy with the iPad died as well because for some reason his headset didn't allow him to talk to people on the helicopter, you know, his team. They had to try and shout to him that there was a T-Rex standing behind him, and so he was too late and he got finished off by the Mosasaurus. <sighs> what is even happening here? How far after the first film are we? Who are these people? What the hell are they doing? This is a nonsensical attempt at retrieving a sample. Why do it at night? Why do you have so few people? Why do you have no precautions? Why do you believe everything is dead? They have the tech to open up the gates, so they should know a hell of a lot more about this island than they clearly fucking do. You, not scan for the you guys should check out Mauler. If you're listening to this, check out Mauler. M A U L E R. His website's awesome. Or his critiques. We then get an expositional news report that basically says there's a volcano active on the island. It was there the whole time, and now it's about to erupt. So everyone's arguing over whether or not the dinosaurs should be saved. I find it ridiculous that everyone on Earth has apparently left this island alone, aside from activists up to this point. But apparently that is the case. These things are worth millions. They are one of a kind. They are unguarded. They are perfect for the black market. Nobody apparently gives a shit, and only activists are interested in them. Okay. We then get to catch up with Dr. Ian Malcolm, and you should remember him because he starred in the other Jurassic films. <laughs> Not to mention that they made sure to remind you that he was absolutely going to be in this film. He is back. There are incredible new dinosaurs, an exploding volcano, and Dr. Ian Malcolm's back. Taiwan, this is Dr. Malcolm. Jack Goldblum, not going to lie. That's pretty awesome. There are terrifying new dinosaurs, an exploding island, and Jeff Goldblum's back. Hello, everybody. I'm Jeff Goldblum. And gee, I'm, I'm so um, thrilled to be back as Dr. Ian Malcolm. So I can't wait to see his involvement with the story. Let's, let's check out his first scene, shall we? Malcolm argues that we shouldn't save the dinosaurs as they are incredibly dangerous. Thus, people begin to call him a murderer in the crowd. This is priceless considering the history of this continuity and what happens when they end up trying to get these things over to civilized society. But fuck it, they don't remember apparently. Which means he's a murderer. And that's the end of the scene. Looking forward to him popping back. Really am. So then we see, uh, what's her name? Annoying robotic lady who outran a T-Rex in heels. Can I call her heels? I'm calling her heels. Heels, since we last saw her, has set up some kind of organization where she tries to rescue the dinosaurs, or at least push the idea that they should be rescued. Her opening dialogue is about how she is trying to get funding, which raises the question of how do they generate money to even have what they have now? How can they make a difference when they aren't visiting or supporting the island whatsoever? Why are so many people working for them with nothing to do and no way to be paid? There's like 20 of these fuckers. Why? What do you even do? Ring senators and maintain a fucking website for three years? Why are you putting this much effort into saving dinosaurs anyway? Those things are dangerous if you didn't catch the memo. The motivation for this entire organization, as stated by the film, is heels explaining that we shouldn't allow a world where our children could grow up with- <coughs> Oh, bloody hell. We begin with the title crawl. Luke Skywalker has vanished. Not a great start since he's about 50% of the reason I was watching this film, but there we are. In his absence, the Hello? Yes. Order has risen from the ashes. Okay, thank you so much for holding. Um... I have saved the information on the system, so now just let me confirm the information. Okay. So your first, your first name is... Just to confirm, can you put back your email address, please? Yes, it.
Hmm? Okay. It's, uh... I'm going to send you the information now. Just tell me if you receive the information, please, okay? Okay, let's see. Log into this thing. Give me one second. Okay. I haven't gotten it yet. I'm gonna check my uh, spam box. Okay. And it's not there either. Maybe it, it's uh, still checking, but it usually pops up by now. But uh, let's see. Give it about uh, 30 seconds. Okay. Maybe it is because the system is loading. Just allow me two more minutes, please, I'm hoping. Okay. Thank you. before I get that email. Okay, no, yeah, I got it. Sir? I got the email. Okay. So can you tell me please if the whole information is correct? Alright, let me scroll down. Um, everything looks correct. Uh, okay. Yes, everything looks correct. Okay. So remember, if the computer reach um, more than 100 percent, I mean 100 degrees Celsius, um, if you want you can call us back or you can just um, follow in the instructions on the email. Okay. And, al and also I'm going to send you a shipping label, but uh, the shipping label is going to be in your email. Okay. Within 24 hours, okay? Alrighty, sounds good. Okay. So, thank you so much for contacting Acer. Have a great night. Oh, you too. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye.